season five is here today and we have the patch notes for those of you that haven't gone through that this video is going to be for you because we're going to go over the changes to the weapons and what you need to expect on how the meta is going to shift from these changes let's get into them so first thing you need to know is two new free weapons uh the ex1 and the ra225 uh the ex1 is a laser beam assault rifle which I'm using the term assault rifle loosely because it actually has three different modes. One is full auto, one is DMR, and one is a charge up sniper rifle. And um, I leveled it up to about 50 ish today, and it's um, pretty much garbage on all of them. Uh, the RA225 is a SMG, which you'll see is available at tier 31, and it is. Reminiscent of a similar to well gun Arma Guerrera kind of feel. High rate of fire, good movement. I think overall it'll be a decent SMG. I don't know specifically if you would pick it over uh, much of anything else right now, but it will be at least a new gun to use. The EX1, I would say, is probably not worth most of the, most of the time you put into it other than it's just, you know, unique factor. Uh, laser beam of doom. So... Let's get into actually looking at the weapons and how they have been changed. And there are a lot of them uh, because uh, that's what they do. So one of the biggest things I think right now that's going to be the largest thing to take out of this is the Vanguard Marksman Rifles now take assault rifle ammunition. Um, so if you've heard me complain about them multiple times saying that their viability is limited based on the ammo, ammo available to them, this has been changed. Uh, the Vanguard uh, Marksman Rifles now take Assault Rifle Ammo. So that's your um, M1 Garand, your G43, your M19 uh, Seltzblatta, your SVT. They all take AR ammo now. Of course, there is a downside to it, but we'll get to that as we get there. Uh, the variable scopes, the 3x6 and 4x8, have been adjusted significantly, they say. They now have glint on them, and I'm guessing that's for every gun, not just for the snipers. Reduced recoil control and adjusted ADS time. They ADS slower now. So, though these these scopes are the cleanest to look through, they are now going to be more jittery and have glint and be slower to use. Uh, you're going to probably see more people adjust themselves to the 3.25 or the, the 3.5 or the 2.5, but one of the um, other scopes because that bounce is going to get really annoying. Uh, despite the fact that the 3x6 and 4x8 are much cleaner unless this uh, recoil control is not as strong as it as or the re recoil reduction is not as strong as i think it is um you might see some changes here aggressive and heavy sniper rifles will, will have seen a large reduction snipers are in a good spot but we're not done yet combined with above we are expecting many viable options and variabilities in long range engagements the three <coughs> the three by six is one of my favorite sites for all snipers uh and these are no longer as strong as they were so uh, I imagine there is going to be some changes on what ones will run on that. I'll get into that as we uh, go through and chest things. Mostly, I'm still using iron sights, so it's not like that that changes me too much, but for a lot of people, you know. Uh, and then the <laughs> EX1 was already balanced today before it even came out. Uh, we made some substantial differences to the EX1 to better accommodate the BR gameplay and Vanguard multiplayer gameplay. The EX1 has limited ammunition, increased recoil, and substantially lower bullet velocity, which just means that if you're using the... The EX1 in Vanguard, it's going to be better. And if you're using it in BR, it's going to be worse. Um, it's not very good. Honestly, they should have probably just left it alone because, again, it's not very good in the BR mode. And I was even using it in uh, Fortune's Keep, a range where it should probably actually done pretty well. And it just doesn't. Okay, so we're off to the AS44. Damage decreased from 24 to 22. That's actually kind of significant. Uh, damage range increased on the 615, which is nice. Uh, vertical recoil control increased as well, so it's going to be easier to use with uh, less damage. Uh, the zac 12 b which is the one that I actually recommend for a lot of the higher rate of fire builds, initial recoil is going up and movement speed uh, is going down. The movement speed decreased penalty is going down. So actually, the 12B is going to be significantly better, and the 615 is going to be pretty good too. This 12B, in combination with the Empress Falcon, actually makes the um, AS44 one of the most disgustingly strong ARs in, uh, for a sniper support if you're going really close range. So this combination together are going to make for a, a monster. Uh, this two damage is not going to make that huge of a difference. It's going to increase the bullets to kill by one. So we're getting there. 
Uh, the Unquestionable Strength, the AS-44, was encroaching on submachine gun class and less uh, assault rifle. So they're trying to just, they're trying to extend the range with the 615. That's what they're trying to do. Assault rifle Charlie, this is the bar. Mag in, uh, it's 40 round mags, or now 50 round mags. Cool. Uh, the Cooper's recoil uh, penalty is increased on the compressed rounds. This 1% is not going to make a difference. The 22 inch uh, recoil control decreased to 35 from 50. That will make a difference. So this thing is going to kick much more left to right. You're going to look at probably running the strife angle grip and the grooved grip now, or grooved, yeah, grooved tape, uh, as those two together are going to most likely make up for this 50% uh, that it used to have. Uh, KGM-40, more nerfs on the way. Uh, minimum damage reduced. Um, sprint to fire time increased. Bullet velocity down. Recoil uh, control decreased. Basically, the entire KGM-40 has been gutted. It has continued to be a monster. Even though it has a long TTK, just the lack of recoil with the really high um, damage output, it's, uh, it's really strong. The weapon should exist firmly as a newcomer friendly, but other weapons will be preferable for high pl skilled pl uh, cat players. Um, this is a, a, a stance they tend to try to take on things, and this is never how this works. So the more, quote unquote, newcomer friendly a weapon, the easier it is for high skilled players to abuse it. So we're going to see a lot of this. Also, the growl just got buffed, and so you're going to see a lot of people running this. Increased to 29 from 28. Uh, max range increased and neck multiplier increased. This neck multiplier is actually larger than most people think they generally are. Neck multipliers mean your it's, it's essentially enough your headshot box gets larger in some form or fashion. Um, the XN4 was, ex was extremely dirty during the Black Ops Cold War Verdansk 84 times because the headshot and neck shot multiplier were exactly the same, which meant that the multiplier or the headshot range was essentially double what everybody else had, which is why the XN4 was so disgusting for a long time. They're basically bringing this up on the Modern Warfare guns to the same same stance. Uh, 24 from 23 for the Groza. Not much will change there, but if you like the Groza, you like the Groza. Um, speed increase for the Vargo 52. The Vargo S has gone through a ton of changes um, as it needed it. The Vargo S was complete garbage, uh, and I don't think there's anybody I know that would actually use this thing. Um, one of the biggest things is... The Vargo S said it was for long range, and none of its things said that or allowed it to do long range. You'll even see right here, Seasons 4's Reloaded uh, Newcomer struggled to find a firm identity in the long range AR class because you jacked it up. Uh, we're making some all round modifications to smooth out the experience while compensating for the slightly below average torso damage profile and with the most generous critical box of the Vanguard Assault Rifles. But now, the neck now matching the headshot multiplier. So, this is the same as what happened for the XN4. Headshot and neck shot multiplier are exactly the same. So basically double the size head box, but low torso damage. Um, this could make a comeback. We'll see. I'll go through and test it. I'll let you know. Assault Rifle Alpha. This is the SCG. Nerfed again. Horizontal recoil control decreased by 10%. Muzzle velocity decreased by 5%. And the 60 round drum mag uh, scalar penalty decreased. So basically it runs slower. Or that's the ADS scalar. So it, ADS is slower. Uh, light machine guns, UGM, slight, sustained recoil slightly adjusted, which means it probably has at least some recoil now. The Type 11 uh, Shrouded Sakura Barrel is actually one of my favorite barrels as it removes the uh, the drop-off damage profile, which is really cool. Uh, and it got its actually rate of fire increased and horizontal recoil increased. This one could be pretty good. And the 5.645 round mag, this is the one that a lot of people use, and this has muzzle velocity velocity penalty removed so these two together the type 11 might actually inch its way into a slightly viable ar style and this is probably one i would recommend looking out for the type 11 and the, and the uh growl right now are probably going to move up quite a bit uh the vargo and all that we'll see the vanguard marksman rifles like i said are now using the ar ammo and they had their flinch decrease which is great because they have a lot of flinch and so by reduced by 33 percent it might be in a solid place for a semi-auto rifle. I love semi-auto rifles, so I'm, I'm, of course I'm going to go into a deep dive on these guys as I, could, as I continue to go through the season and really see how they uh, reworked them. Uh, they sped up the ADS speed on the SVT, and they increased the uh, a lot of the ways that the recoil, or they increased the recoil control on most of them, but also decreased damage over range. Um, these things already suffered at damage over range, so I imagine that that's not going to help much. These are probably going to see mostly battle rifle usages, which means you're going to be seeing them in conjunction with sniper rifles, and these guns are going to attempt to be your close mid-range, much like a foul, 
or even the DR Mar 14 um, after the nerf. Not before the nerf when it destroyed the entire lobby, but bef but after the nerf when it was actually more of a mobile semi-auto rifle. Um, the M1 Grand's muscle, muscle velocity increased. The 12 round mag is up to 16 and recoil uh, decreased from, uh, to 5% down from 25%. So, you know, this one's going to be a little harder to control, but you can, you'll, you'll be able to span a little bit more. Uh, the Sakura, again, uh, increased to 40 rounds, up from 20, which is cool. Uh, rate of fire bonus decreased from 25 from 43. So basically, they're going to nerf everything to the ground after giving you AR ammo. Um, I really don't blame them. These things have a way of getting really out of hand really fast. Semi-auto rifles are generally extreme uh, skill representative weapons. And if they are just even slightly overtuned, again, the DMR-14, um, they take over the gun that I think is going to see some usage now is the G43, uh, the Gewehr 43, as this is a gun that was already borderline useful, um, but was held back again by ammo type and the amount that you could carry. The G43, I could see this one sneaking up and actually grabbing a hold of some people. Along with the 1916, both of these feature a full auto barrel, and so those are weapons that people, if they can get a hand of it, they can, uh, they can really wreak some havoc with these things. So I'm really excited to see if any uh, G43 or 1916 builds come out and actually rise to the top. Uh, the, Crom the Modern Warfare crossbow, this really doesn't matter. This is all damage multipliers from 1.5 to 1.8, all that, all that right there. Again, it doesn't matter. Most people are using the crossbow with the explosive rounds. If the bolt hits you, it's going to explode for 300. In base mode, you're down. It, there's you can't stop it so realistically it doesn't matter this nerf is only if you don't use explosive rounds uh the combat shield movement speed scaler decreased to 0. 0.785 from eight so they slowed down the movement speed with the right with the combat shield uh that really doesn't mean anything to me scythe got buffed Ducachi, dual kadachis uh got nerfed uh handguns the clouser no one's going to use this it doesn't matter if you made this thing two shot to the head no one's going to use this thing mm, the pistols are just doa for the most of the part uh, snipers have been adjusted. Flinch has been decreased on heavy by 11, and flinch decreased on light by 40%. The light snipers might actually have some fight in them now, uh, as you can be a little bit more aggressive with it. The Tundra actually has some room to come in here. Uh, it got its damage range increased to 69, which you know is the magic number, apparently, for the internet. So that one is obviously broken now. I'm just kidding, but it, it could be good. Uh, torso multiplier is up. Lower torso multiplier is up. Extremity is up. I mean, realistically, that's what, that's what these fast snipers need. My Type 99 might be busted. We'll see. Because they uh, they they fixed my 712 barrel, which is the one I use. Uh, neck multiplier up to 0.62, and the torso is down to 1.1 from 1.18. Which means, most likely, headshot and neck shots are going to be one-shot kills, and the torso is going to do, like, 299, and they're going to survive. So, my super aggressive Type 99 might not work anymore. We'll see. Three-line damage bonus decreased from, uh, to 7 from 10%. And rate of fire is uh, penalty is decreased for, uh, from to 6.5, up from 10. So realistically, it's going to fire a little faster, do a little less damage. Uh, they nerfed the combat shotgun. Uh, it will no longer do its one to two shot kills. So that thing's back to about normal. Armor Guerrera got gutted. If you were an Armor Guerrera fan, uh, it's probably going to feel almost the same, but it, you're going to lose a lot more fights. Same thing for the Marco and for the Blixen. Uh, the big the big call out here is the uh, 762 Grinko lost its headshot multiplier, but it got its torso damage increased. Um, this doesn't seem like much, 1.13 to one uh, from 1.0, but it is actually a pretty decent one. This one is going to give you a um, a pretty good deal. Recoil control down, so the Blixen, the Marco, and the Armor Grayer are all seeing a bit of a hit. UGR got buffed. Cool. I mean, that's something the Finnick got buffed. I love the Finnick. This one's neck multiplier got pumped up to 1.4. So that means the Finnick is now going to fry super fast. And then the Tommy gun uh, looks like it got its um, rate of fire decreased on the chariot and vertical recoil penalty decreased. So the chariot's a little bit easier, doesn't fire as fast. Uh, minimum damaging up from to 22 on the chariot, 8.5 or 5.5. The this, this gun is probably just right outside of range of viable still. Uh, the PPSH still right outside of viable. Um, and then the submachine gun, Bravo. This is the P90. It's one of my favorites. Uh, Mint damage increased to 22. Mint damage up to 19 from 18. So this gun is going to be semi-viable as well. And then they attempted to do something to the striker. And I'm proud of them because I love the striker. But this thing is never going to work, guys. Step away from the striker. 
unless you hate yourself. Um, we go into attachments. We got things like the muzzles. MX silencer, you're going to see it recoil decrease. Uh, you're going to see muzzle velocity decrease, damage range decrease. Realistically, they want the MX silencer to not be the only option anymore. And the same thing for the uh, 1928. These are just the, the catch-all silencers uh, for the game. And realistically, the Vanguard guns don't need these. With the... With the access to the different ammo types, the guns themselves don't need these silencers. Most of them aren't even really necessary, as the guns are generally going to do just as well outside of the, like, farthest long-range ARs. Uh, a lot of them will generally do better with a compensator or do better with an L-break or something like that, uh, and then rub some Sonic. Uh, the, the benefit of lengthened is generally pretty low, um unless comboed with a lot of these silencers. So it'll be fine. Uh, Mercury silencer, uh, horizontal recoil down from five to four. Decent. Uh, again, the three points, the three by six and the four by eight sniper glint has been enabled. Uh, recoil control is decreased uh, from five to one. That's actually significant. Flinch resistance decreased significant and ADS penalty for snipers up to 10% from four. That is massive. A 6% a increase on ADS speed. Um, if that is a compounding increase on the ADS penalty, you're going to get some really slow ADS speeds with these things. And uh, granted, these things are very, very clean sites, so you can make up for it. But man, if this is a compounding penalty, that's insane. Uh, same for the 4 by 8 Same stuff. And then the 12% um, up from 8 Um that's pretty insane. Recoil control down from 10% to 5%. Massive. When it comes to something that zoomed in, that's massive. And then tight grip, barely got a nerve. Uh, down from 10% to 9%. Again, these are something that I feel like is compounding, so it could, that could end up to come back and bite people in the butt, but we won't know until we get into the numbers a little bit further. Obviously, that is what we do here. I am uh, your anti-meta loadout doctor. I generally di deep dive into these kind of numbers. I'm obsessed with them because... I don't know why. I just like to go down these rabbit holes and figure out the best numbers. But that is your rundown for the patch notes for the weapon changes for Season 5. Um, I'm going to go in and just keep going in and breaking them down and trying to really figure out how these all affect the way that the game runs. And I'll have more for you. So if you want to get more into this style stuff, come back and check it out. Or come hit me up on the stream. We are live every day, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I will answer your questions live on stream. Or you can come back to the videos, leave me comments, and I will try to break down those for you too if there's something you have in specific that you want to know. But until next time, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone else, peace.